Hello, my name is Dr. Kendall Lee. I'm director of the Neural Engineering Laboratory at Mayo Clinic. Deep brain stimulation, commonly referred as DBS, is a minimally invasive neurosurgical treatment that is used here at the Mayo Clinic to treat a variety of disorders, including Parkinson's disease, essential tremor, Tourette's syndrome, and obsessive compulsive disorder. One of the most successful applications of DBS has been in the treatment of essential tremor. This is a highly disabling disorder that is characterized by movement-induced tremor that can affect the arms, the head, and the voice. While DBS can be very effective at reducing the symptoms of essential tremor, we still do not fully understand how this therapy works. I'm here to introduce Will Gibson, who is an MD-PhD student in my laboratory, who has been using functional MRI, functional magnetic resonance imaging, to try to better understand the brain networks that mediate the clinical effects of deep brain stimulation. He is going to explain the key results from our recent paper, which will be published in Brain in the coming months. In this paper, we investigate the relationship between the bold activation patterns caused by thalamic stimulation for essential tremor and the therapeutic and adverse effects that are associated with the stimulation. And now, Will Gibson. Thanks, Dr. Lee. Recently, we found that by combining functional MRI with thalamic DBS in large animals, that thalamic DBS results in bold activation in the motor cortex as well as the contralateral cerebellum. What we don't know, however, is whether these bold activation patterns are reflective of the therapeutic and adverse effects of the stimulation in humans. The VIM, which is the target nucleus, lies immediately anterior to the VC, which is the somatosensory relay nucleus of the thalamus. Inappropriate stimulation of the VC can result in paresthesias, which are unpleasant sensations that can limit the efficacy of a neurostimulator. So what we wanted to do was combine bold fMRI with DBS in humans to test the hypothesis that there might exist DBS-evoked activation patterns that correlate with the therapeutic effects of stimulation, as well as the presence of paresthesias. What we found was that DBS resulted in bold activation across the sensory motor circuit in the sensory motor cortex, the thalamus, as well as the contralateral cerebellum. Interestingly, bold activation in all three of these regions of interest correlated with the therapeutic effectiveness of DBS on tremor, with the strongest correlation observed in the contralateral cerebellum. We then performed an analysis using dynamic causal modeling in which we evaluated the effective connectivity across the cerebellothalamocortical circuit. We found that inhibitory within region connectivity in the cerebellum correlated with the therapeutic effectiveness of DBS. This provides further evidence that modulation of the cerebellum by thalamic DBS likely plays an important role in the therapeutic mechanism. Finally, we found that bold activation within specific subregions of the sensory motor cortex residing on both pre- and post-central gyri were associated with the presence of paresthesia. This result is particularly intriguing, and it suggests that the bold effects of DBS on the cortex may be related in a complex manner to both the therapeutic and adverse effects resulting from stimulation. These results provide missing links between the DBS-evoked bold signal and the clinical effects of thalamic DBS. While many technical limitations remain, our results suggest that in the future, perhaps fMRI could be used in combination with DBS to help guide stimulator programming or to help optimize electrode placement in the operating room. Thank you very much for taking a look at our video abstract. We hope that you take a look at our paper when it comes out shortly.